Good evening. My name is Annie. I'm coming to you today across the wire from our homestead, Pluck G Cells Homestead. And we also have an online presence with Ozarks Living Online because we are nestled in the Ozark Mountains of Arkansas. We're on roughly one acre where we raise goats, ducks, chickens, guineas, recently cooney cooney pigs, and we garden a lot. Which brings me to what I'm doing today. Over the last couple of weeks, um, we've been kind of uh, reappropriating our resources and kind of reorganizing our space because we've had some really major life changes. And in order to take care of what we have here, uh, we decided that we were going to use the mother-in-law suite on the property uh, as a headquarters for the homestead. And so I have recently converted uh, the furniture that my mom used to use for her quilting in the space where she used to work on her research and blogging uh, into a processing area where we can uh, start seeds, we can um, process seeds and herbs and other food that needs to be processed. We are going to utilize the old kitchen for our canning and drying and uh, dehydrating as well as our incubation of our uh, birds and basically it's going to give a space where our homesteading efforts can be kept separate from our housekeeping efforts. Uh, my husband is a model reporter who um, is also a YouTuber and who has a um, home-based business where he models trains and does uh, weathering of trains and other similar things. Uh, he's a member of the National Model Rail Workers Association and uh, works uh, sometimes, well, whenever he can for the local railroad and uh, he has been a YouTuber for a long time. So, uh, we agreed that, you know, he would use the studio area of our main house to continue those efforts because they just continue to grow. And so tonight, while I'm visiting with you, he is live with um, those guys working on the things that he's passionate about. So, I decided to take the same time and to introduce myself to you and tell you a little bit about our homestead and what we have going on right now. I have no doubt that there will be many more updates to come and we look forward to sharing this journey with you. Say hi, Axie. Hi, Axie. It is seed starting season and working on setting up a new workspace for the homestead so that I have better places to do things. And this cat has decided that he needs to be where I am. Off you go. So, first things first, I have two drying racks full of seeds from last year. I'm not even sure what all of those are. Then I have dried nettles, which I need to process. I've got tobacco seeds, which these are actually the blooms, but you'll have to work out the seeds from them. But tobacco seeds are infinitesimally small. And so I found that it would be easier to go ahead and capture the whole seed pod rather than try to uh, 
only get the seeds off of the tobacco. Uh, so if you see, we have one of the little pods and then inside the pods are then little or smaller, little or smaller pieces, which then break apart and inside of them are the tiny seeds. Um, I don't know, this will be my first time processing them, so I may have to actually, uh, what's I'm looking for, dehydrate them further to get them out? Any ideas? I'm not sure. Anyway, we'll get back to that later. The important thing is, is we save them, and hopefully there's some seeds in there. If not, well, I've got a friend that I got this year's from, and I'll hopefully be able to get some more. All right. Next, I have a paper towel with dried lemon cucumber seeds from last year. The process. Dried flowers. Don't have to do anything with those. At least not for now. This is my holes and refuse pile from where I was processing seeds earlier. And I don't know about you guys, but we use everything on the homestead. We try not to throw anything away. And these are actually the holes from castor beans. My grandfather, who's passed, is a huge fan of castor beans and the plants. And they're very, very good at re enriching your soil. So I've saved those um shells so that i can use them in my compost then here is the refuse from dill which i held on to it because there's still quite a few seeds in here from the the heads and you can see here with this one i was processing in a hurry over the winter and cold so if you look see if we can get it to focus no no focus there's still some seeds on the deal. So I'm gonna process all of that. Once I'm finished with it, then again, those will go into our compost. Because like I said, we don't, we don't throw away anything on the homestead. That way we can go ahead and use it. So speaking of the castor beans, here are what they look like before they've been processed. These things are very sharp, right? So I find that in order to process them, the best thing to do is to actually kind of firmly kind of rub them in your hands and then you crush them the way you would a pecan or something like that. Um, which it's easier to do with a small pair of pliers or something once they completely dry up like this. But once you break apart the pods, then you have these individual seeds. Again, one of these will take make a plant that gets six, seven, eight, nine foot tall. It's pretty crazy if you ask me. And I thought that I had processed all of them and lo and behold, here we have a whole nother bag full that my mother saved but I didn't realize we're here. So I'm gonna get to work on those and again once I finish processing them I will have a pile of these seeds as well as a lot of these shells which are good for like I said making compost and you can make different kinds look it's a stray okra seed. Note to yourself and to me for future reference Whenever you put seeds back throughout the year, sit down periodically and take the time to actually separate them out and put them into containers. You would think by seeing the mess that's in front of me here and between us that I haven't processed anything, but that is not true. So here we have processed seeds. These are peas that are ready to plant. 
here is radish seeds, ready to plant. Peanuts. I've never grown peanuts before, but I actually have two varieties. Any pointers that anyone would like to share with me, please do. I live in Zone 7 in Arkansas, and like I said, never planted peanuts before, but I found some in my seed stashes, so we're probably going to give it a whirl this year. All right, then we have some whole peas. Mm, my son was helping me moving this stuff around, and he put some garlic that had already started to sprout. Walking, actually, no, not garlic, walking onions in a jar airtight and there's moisture in them you always want to make sure whenever you're collecting your seeds and you put them up that if you have a situation like this that you get all of the air out of your seeds before you stir that stir them these store them these you see these have little green sprouts on them so if i get a very small cup and put lids on or put uh, water on them, these will go ahead and begin to sprout. Or, even better, I can go ahead and put them in my seed pods with some soil and get them on my seed station and we can go to town with walking in. They're actually one of my favorites, as well as my aunt's favorites. Um, here, I have some seeds that I'm not 100% sure what they are. They were, they look like a black pea or bean. And they were in amongst things left over from my grandmother who's been gone for several years. So I'm going to plant these and see what they are. Maybe you guys can help me figure it out. All right. Okra. Now, this okra is from okra that I had in the garden. I planted two or three varieties all close to each other. And they made a really awesome crop this year with plants that got up to 14 feet tall. So I didn't even bother to separate them out. I just stored them all together because I figure it'd be kind of the luck of the draw to see what we got. Here's my dill harvest that I have off of all of these, which granted I didn't keep all of them. But whenever uh, you let them go to full seed, at the end of the season, I let them go ahead and completely dry out because they're great for attracting uh, your critters throughout the year. Um, and then once they get completely mature, then I strip them off of here and put them into a container so that I have them for the following year. These are beets. And I'm told that these are actually left over from my great aunt. And I'm told that they're capers. I'm not really sure about that. So that'll be interesting. And here are more of the walking onions. So I'm going to process those out. Parsnips, seed ling tags, because you can never have too many of those. And I think I've got about 30, about 100 uh, jiffy pellets. They're not my favorite, but at this time of the year, when you've got so many things going on and you haven't really gotten organized like me because I've got a new workspace here, um, these things can be kind of handy. But you have to be careful with them um, and make sure that you pull back the tops pretty good so that your seedlings don't actually get trapped inside the pods. But we'll get into all of that later. More holes for the compost. So as you can see here, I uh, today has been an interesting day and I chose this time of all times to begin to share with you simply because of the fact that I am starting a new chapter in my life. Um, I have been a gardener since I was a kid. I've had my own place and gardened there since I was mm, in my early 20s. My son was a baby when I moved into my first home where I had real gardens and he is about to be 16 inside of the next uh, few days, actually. So my baby's gonna be sweet 16. Anyway, um, during that time I've always gardened. Uh, usually I would garden with family as well as have my own gardens. But it wasn't until three years ago that I moved in 
next door to my mom on family property in Evansville, Arkansas, which is very rural in the Ozark Mountains. And when I moved up here, my mom and I went to work reclaiming property that had pretty much laid fallow, not had any animals, not been cultivated in a very long time. And so the first couple of years that I was up here was spent um, reclaiming the land back from where it had you know, naturalized itself and cut clearing fence row and reclaiming pasture land and just cleaning and organizing and um, starting to get an infrastructure together and the right tools and resources in order to be able to you know take care of a tract of land and this time last year my mom and I felt that it was time to make the full full commitment to homestead the land. When I was a small girl, we uh, had a dream of having a sustainable farm with animals and plants and growing all as much of our own food as we possibly could and living off of the land as much as possible like our ancestors before us did. And because my mom was a single parent and worked a lot, I had other kids besides myself that dream never quite came to fruition to its fullest extent. Um, we did have uh, 10 acres in Mulberry, Arkansas, which is where I'm originally from. And we always had an animal or two, and we always had gardens. And we raised vegetables every year. And my mom was a big fan of flowers, and her mother before her was a master gardener. So it's just kind of something that's been in the family always. and you know, multiple generations of farmers in the family, that kind of thing. So we decided that it was time to carry on those traditions. And since we were both here and um, someone was home on the homestead at all times, we, we made the commitment when COVID uh, first started that we were gonna take things to the next level. And um, we invested in the infrastructure to support uh, chickens, and we started off with a few chickens and then we got more chickens and then more chickens and then I started hatching chickens and um, last, last fall she made me promise that I wouldn't hatch any more chickens until at least February of this year and it's March and I haven't so I'm proud of myself but it's taken a lot of self-control. Uh, this, this big cold spell that we had recently actually set us back and um, our eggs our eggs our chickens aren't actually laying any eggs right now so i don't have anything to hatch except for duck eggs and i already have too many ducks so i don't need to hatch any duck eggs right now um i did speak with my husband recently though and we've decided that we are going to go ahead and uh, hatch out some of our ducklings because we have very very good breeds of ducks uh, that we ordered from a hatchery out in California. Don't ask me the name of it is right now. I would have to actually go look and see. And it's we've mentioned it in other places on our social media, so you can find it. But long story short, I, we have really good ducks. We have a, a Drake that we actually call Drake, who looks like he's wearing a little tuxedo. Um, keeps his girls in line. He takes care of my chickens and my guineas. And so um, I think he would make some really good ducklings for food. And so we've talked about it and we're going to start, instead of hatching out chickens this year, we're actually going to hatch out our ducklings and um, raise out as many as we can put in our little hatcher. And when they hit eight weeks, we're going to go ahead and butcher them and put them up for meat. Um, also, we've decided this year that instead of only just focusing on eggs, that we are going to raise out some Cornish, uh, Cornish crosses and again raise them until they're mature and then put them up for meat as well. Our goal is to continue to only eat um, organic and uh, sustainable meat that we raise on the farm as much as possible. Uh, we recently, uh, within the last several months, made the decision to stop buying meat from the grocery store and we now um, purchase our meat either through butcher box butcher box or it's homegrown here on the farm so we're making huge strides towards our goals um right now we have made plans to um, 
work on our fencing infrastructure and put in some new stalls for our goats. When we started all of this a year ago, of course we started with one nanny goat and she was bred and pregnant and she gave us twin boys. Uh, those twin boys we then um, raised up and traded one as a sire for a local goat, goat herd and traded him for a nanny and um, we kept one sire that uh, we will uh, pair with uh, that new nanny that we got her name is Mabel and then from one of our fellow homesteaders here in Northwest Arkansas, we purchased Tank. Uh, you guys actually helped us with that through a fundraiser. And Tank is going to be the sire for our um, for Miss P. So we've got Miss P and Tank, and then we also have Mabel and uh, BB. Once uh, BB uh, gives me a baby, uh, he'll be up for um, either sell or trade. And we've recently expanded our um, reach of animals here on the homestead. And we now have two Kumi Kumi pigs that we got from a, a local um, horsewoman in the Prairie Grove community. And um, we will probably go to the folks that we got Tank from um, because they also raise uh, small pigs and get us a male so that we can breed those as well. Um, Charlotte, our female, she um, she'll, should make some good babies. And uh, her brother came with her as well as a companion. He's been fixed and his name is Wilbur. Wilbur will be food. But in the meantime, he will make a good buddy and friend for his sister until we can get get her a boyfriend so um, that's a really quick rundown of kind of what we're working on right now so um, unfortunately we just experienced a, um, a loss here on the homestead the worst kind actually um, my mother who lived next door and helped us tend all the animals and whose home that we actually live on um, just passed away the last week of February. And the best way that I can think of to honor her memory and to be a good steward of what she worked her life to have is to um, continue our efforts with the homestead and continue our back to Eden gardening methods and deep till or till free deep mulching methods to um, plant as much as we can and harvest as much as we can from the land here and to continue with our animal husbandry and eat as healthily as we can and provide a source of sustainable foodstuffs uh, not just for our family but for our friends and um, even to our community so that's where we're at right now and given that fact i am we have actually uh, chosen to uh, use my mom's mother-in-law suite home uh, as the site for everything everything homestead so you guys will be seeing a lot of this place as it transforms over um, the season and the coming seasons um, we're going to be putting in a, um, a canning area and a food preservation area in the old kitchen. Um, I've converted my mom's quilting area for the things that I'm doing right now, which is you know processing food, processing seeds, uh, dry racks for collecting herbs and um, naturally occurring uh, plants here. There's a lot of thistles in my things um, here on the homestead. And so I also have all my seeds out right now because we're planning on what we're going to plant where. Uh, so you'll be seeing a lot of this as we kind of work through things. And I forgive you. Um, I forgive you. <laughs> I 
ask you guys to forgive me because I usually stay behind the camera. Um, I'm a photographer and um, I'm not a YouTuber, never have been. Um, but I have myself spent a lot of time and energy with my fellow homestead homies uh, learning about and sharing information with other homesteaders, gardeners, and folks out there in the community. But I don't generate content myself. I, I tend to collect it and share it with other people um, through various social media ch uh, channels. So I've been thinking about it and I've decided why not throw it out there. And if my, uh, my ramblings can help you in some way, or if you're interested in what I'm doing, I want to provide me with some insights or, in or advice or just come along for the ride as we at the Collect G-Cells Homestead and um, Ozarks Living Online move forward in our journey, then uh, you're welcome to do so. We encourage you. We thank you. And... Uh, yeah that's where we're at so on this rainy rainy thursday evening i want to thank you for your time and i want to thank you for the things that you do to be good stewards of, of the land and of the resources you've been provided and i hope that uh, you have a fantastic rest of your week and weekend coming up and we'll have some more updates soon stay blessed